الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على تمان الأكملان على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد then inshallah we'll continue with our reading and translating from the book known as Sharh Usul I'tiqad Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah or the explanation of the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah I'm sorry the explanation of the fundamentals of the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah the explanation of the fundamentals of the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah by al imam abul qasim hibatullah al lalaka'i rahimahullah ta'ala who died in the year 418 after the hijrah and we are in the author's introduction and it is an introduction that we mentioned before it's suitable to be studied in and of itself it's an introduction that if an individual knows what's in the introduction and is aware of it and uses it as a, a starting point in this introduction he's done a great job of summarizing the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and the history of uh, how it was transmitted and what opposed it and we're in the section of the introduction where the author rahimahullah ta'ala he was talking about after mentioning the necessity of following the usul that we mentioned, right? The kitab and the sunnah and the consensus of the sahaba holding fast to it and dying upon it and avoiding uh, innovators and being <clears throat> and not lending them your ear and being away from innovation. Uh, he mentioned that and he mentioned the benefits of those who follow that methodology and those who follow that blueprint. And then likewise, he mentioned those who turn away from it. And those who turn away, he mentioned two categories or two types of individuals. Those who turn away from the fundamentals of the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the fundamentals that we base our religion upon, while still claiming an affiliation to it. Those who claim an affiliation to these fundamentals, but in reality are opposed to them. So they only uh, uh, adhere to the fundamentals and they only use these foundations that we build off of when it suits them. But more often than not, you find them even in the way that they use them being different than us, being different than the people of the Sunnah. So they claim an affiliation to the Quran, but you find that their statements about what the Quran is, is different than the statements of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You find them claiming an affiliation to the Sunnah, but you find that their statement about what Sunnah can be used and how the Sunnah can be used and the validity and the quality of the Sunnah being different than the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You see them claiming an affiliation to the Sahaba, claiming an, an allegiance to the Sahaba, but then you find them uh, 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 accusing the Sahaba of being less intelligent than themselves and being less precise than themselves. So they say the way of the Salaf was Aslam, was safer, but the way of the Khalaf, the later generations, was A'lam wa Ahkam, was more knowledgeable and more precise and more correct and, to the, the, and more accurate. And so like this, even though they claim an affiliation to the Sunnah, and to the fundamentals that the people of the Sunnah use, you find them being different than us in them. And then there was a second group of people. This second group, they don't even act like they're affiliated to the, the, the fundamentals that Ahl Sunnah is based on and built off of or built upon. You don't even find them claiming an affiliation. Instead, they attack the fundamentals that we build upon uh, considering them to be hashu, to be nothing more than just a gathering of statements and a blind following. They consider that which our fundamentals are to be ignorance and adilatun lafziyah, uh, just verbal arguments that don't benefit any knowledge. And you find them leaning more to the views of the philosophers and the what they call the enlightened and the intellectuals. And this is what they base their religion upon. And this is their fundamentals, even if they claim Islam. And so these are the two types of categories of people who turn away 
from the fundamentals that we mentioned in the beginning of this book. And he talked about the benefits of those and the, the, the reward of those and the lifestyle, the benefits in this life and the life to come, but specifically the benefits in this life for the one who adheres to the fundamentals that we mentioned. And he talked about the harms of the ones who turn away from that and what is in store for them, that which was mentioned in some of the previous uh, uh, recordings. And so now we're going to continue with the statement of the author regarding all of this after mentioning all of that and having the last thing being that second category of people who turn away from the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, uh, that second group of people who don't even claim an affiliation, but instead their affiliation is to like as to the likes of an nazam and Alaf and people like this from the philosophers, from the Muslims, and likewise, even before that, from the non-Muslims. What is their condition? Now the author is going to delve into what is their condition? What are their uh, circumstances and how are they in themselves? And so the author, he says, قَوْمٌ لَمْ يَتَدَيَّنُوا بِمَعْرِفَةِ آيَاتِكِ بِمَعْرِفَةِ آيَةٍ من كتاب الله في تلاوة أو دراية ولم يتفكروا في معنى آية ففسروها أو تأولوها على معنى اتباع من سلف من صالح علماء الأمة إلا على ما أحدثوا من آرائهم الحديثة ولا إخبرت أقدامهم في طلب سنة أو عرفوا من شراع الإسلام مسألة فيعد, فيعد رأي هؤلاء حكمة وعلما وحجج وبراهين وبع و ويعد كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم حشوا وتقليدا وحملتها جهالا وبلها ذلك ظلما وعدوانا وتحكما وتغيانا. Now so here the author he says قوم لم يتدينوا بمعرفة آية من كتاب الله and this is important for us to really give it some consideration before mentioning what the author mentions here. And in this book, Wallahi, ya ikhwan, this book is from the most important books that an individual can read and, and study. When it comes to looking for who is on the straight path and who is not upon the straight path, there are certain qualities that an individual can see. And these qualities are the cause of them being on the straight path or not. And likewise, the result of them being on the straight path or not. Meaning it's a, it's a circular effect. So the people who are on the straight path, what caused them to be upon the straight path? After the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the success that Allah has given them, they hold fast to the book of Allah. They hold fast to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And like this, you find them guided to the straight path. And then what keeps them on the straight path is they're holding firm to this. And the more they're on the straight path, the more they benefit from the Quran and the sunnah. So what got them to the straight path was the Quran and sunnah. And the result of being upon the straight path is an increasement in their understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, which in turn gives them a stability upon the straight path, which in turn gives them an increasement in the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, and like this. While the contrary is true as well, and this is what the author is about to speak on, those who are not upon the straight path, the qualities that you can know that they are not upon the straight path is that they don't give any importance to the book and the sunnah. You don't find them having dedicated themselves to studying it. You don't find them memorizing ayat and ahadith. You don't find them knowing evidence. They have completely turned away from the book and the sunnah. And thus, they have been misguided from the straight path. And when they were misguided from the straight path, that misguidance takes them further away from the book and the sunnah. And being further away from the book and the sunnah puts them deeper into misguidance. 
and being deeper into misguidance takes them even further away from the book and the sunnah until it comes a moment in this circular pattern where they have no concern or acknowledgement of the Quran and the Sunnah whatsoever. So when it comes to trying to decipher who is who and what group is upon clear sightedness and what group is astray, then you don't have to look further than to what the groups call to. And not just the claim, because everybody claims Layla and Layla is free from all of them. But not just the claim, what their actions show to support. Because if you claim the book and the sunnah, then it should put you on the straight path. And being on the straight path should increase you in the book and the sunnah. If you've been upon the correct path for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, there should be a progression in your Islam and your awareness of the book and the sunnah and your application of the book and the sunnah. And that awareness and that application should, it's going to result in you being steadfast upon the book and the sunnah. And that's going to result in you being more aware and applying more of the book and the sunnah. So the author here, he's talking about those individuals who have turned away from the book and the sunnah. And so he says, There are a group of people that they do not establish their religion. They don't worship. They don't practice their religion by having awareness of an ayah of the book of Allah. Their religion isn't established upon awareness of the ayat of the book of Allah. It's a group of people. Their religion is not established based on awareness of the ayat of the book of Allah. They have no knowledge of it. He says, Fi tilawatin o diraya. They have no awareness of the book of Allah, not in its recitation, nor in its understanding or its meanings. They're a group of people, you see them, they don't establish the book in the sunnah, tilawatan, nor do they, get, let alone giving it the necessary effort to understand it. They're a group of people who have no concern for the ayah in the book of Allah. They have no concern for the ayah in the book of Allah, tilawatan o dirayatan whether it be through recitation or through understanding. Nor do they ponder over the meaning of any ayah. They don't dwell and think and reflect on the meanings of any ayah. So that their lack of pondering doesn't lead them to giving it any tafsir. Right? They do not ponder or reflect over any ayah and therefore explain its meaning in detail or establish the appropriate interpretation of the ayah based or according to the meaning of following the salaf as-salih, the ulama of this ummah. Right? So they don't ponder over any ayah over the meaning of any they don't ponder over the meaning of any ayah and thus they do not interpret its meaning correctly nor do they uh, uh they don't explain its meaning correctly nor do they interpret the quran based on the meanings of following the way of the salaf as salih the ulama of this ummah right they don't care to understand the quran the way the previous generations of scholarship understood the Quran. Their effort is not in understanding and explaining and correctly interpreting the Quran the way Abu Bakr did, the way Umar did, the way Ali did, the way Uthman did, right? You don't find them trying to understand the Quran in that fashion. He says, Illa ala ma ahdathu min ara'ihim al haditha. Instead, all they care to do with regards to the interpretation of the Quran and its understanding is based upon what they have innovated from their uh, 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 newly invented opinions or what they have introduced from their innovated opinions. The only way they care to understand the Quran is how they 
or in a, is in a way that corresponds to how they have innovated. That's the only way they care to understand the Quran. If it doesn't support their innovation, they don't care about the Quran. He says, Their feet have never gotten dusty in searching out the Sunnah. They've never gotten their feet dirty searching for the Sunnah. Meaning they've never traveled to figure out what the Sunnah is, to learn a new hadith. They've never traveled to get knowledge from the people of the Sunnah. And this is a quality, like we said, these are the qualities that you can distinguish the people based off of them. Those who you show your affiliation to and those who uh, you claim are upon knowledge. Have they put effort into learning the views of the Salaf, the Quran, how they gave it its tafsir, how they applied it? Have they traveled to seek hadith? Did they learn? Did they get their feet dirty and dusty learning this religion? Or have they sat at home the entirety of the time? Online, for example, nowadays, and they don't do any effort. Allah Musta'an. He says, sunnah. And their feet have never gotten dusty seeking the sunnah. He says, nor have they learned from the legislation of Islam any topic. They haven't learned any topics from the legislation of Islam. You ask them about tahara, they don't know. You ask them about wudu. You ask them about salat. You ask them about zakat, saum, hajj, marriage, buying and selling, for uh, faraid, inheritance. Right? You ask them about crime and punishment. They don't know any topics from the legislation of Islam. Right? O Arafu min Shara'i al Islami Mas'ala. For you addu, for you addu rot you ha ula, for you addu, for you addu rot ya ha ula, e hikmatan wa ilma. And since they haven't, uh, they haven't done any of these things that would allow the opinions of these individuals to actually be considered wisdom and knowledge or evidence and clear proofs the fact that these individuals haven't taken any of these steps they haven't learnt they haven't uh, 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 been aware of any ayah they don't recite the Quran they don't think about the Quran ponder over its meanings giving it the explanation and the interpretation that is according to the way of the Salaf they never got their feet dirty seeking knowledge, nor are seeking hadith, nor do they know any issues of Islamic law. Any of those things would be what's necessary for us to consider their opinions valid, for us to consider their opinions about the religion something that is wisdom and something that is knowledge and something that is an evidence and something that is a clear proof. But the fact that they didn't do any of those things means that their opinions are not such. It means that their opinions are not evidence. They're not clear proof. They're not knowledge. They're not wisdom. Instead, it's the opposite. It's ignorance. It is uh, foolishness. It is not a proof, but a shubha. It is not clear evidence, but something that confuses and misleads. He says, Well, you do kitab Allah. These people, they consider the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hashwan wa taqlidan, wa hamalataha juhalan wa bulha. They consider the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be nothing more than a gathering of statements, hashu, wa taqlid, and blind following. They consider us blind followers, because all we do is hear and obey the Quran and the sunnah. They criticize us. They say, you guys don't think about it. You guys don't, you know, uh, try to figure out. You guys say Allah says something and that's all it is to you. Just Allah said, the messenger said, without any thought. They consider that to be taqlid. When in reality, when you question them about their leaders, Ar-Razi, Al-Alaf, Al-Nazam, Al-Jubba'i, right? When you question, question them about their leaders, 
All they do is repeat their statements like parrots without any true understanding, but they call following the Quran and following the Sunnah blind following. Wallahu musta'an. The author, he says, they consider the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be nothing more than a gathering of statements and blind following. And they consider those who carry such knowledge, those who are the carriers and the bearers of the Quran and the sunnah, those who carry such knowledge, they consider them to be foolish, ignorant. Wa bulhan, or bulahan. Right, Bula is the, the 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 person who is in a state of ghafla, unaware, uneducated. He doesn't have any awareness in reality. He says, "Dalika vulman wa udwana wa tahakuman wa tughiana." This from them is nothing more than vulm. As we mentioned before, vulm is to put something where it doesn't belong. So the criticism that they've levied against Ahl Sunnah doesn't belong there. Instead, it belongs with them. And so their action in reality is zulm. They're putting the criticism on us when it actually belongs with them. They're calling our statements hashu when we want to know what Allah said and know what the messenger said and know what the salaf said. But in reality, their statements are nothing more than hashu. It's nothing more than just a gathering up of he said, he said. Then they're calling us blind followers when in reality they're the blind followers right so their statement is nothing more than vulm placing things where it doesn't belong oppression warudwan enmity and transgressing of bounds what to hakuman and erroneous judgments right they just make up judgments and determinations and try to throw them against us to see what sticks without there being any foundation for the judgment that they made. They make determinations without solid evidence to make that claim. This is tahakkum, right? They just make up a statement and a determination without there being anything to support it. How could you, what evidence do they have that we are blind followers when all you see us doing is looking at the Quran and understanding it and interpreting it and explaining it according to the way of the Salaf. Where's the blind following in that? We look at the statements of the Salaf and we compare and contrast and see which one goes stronger with the book and the Sunnah. And that's the statement that we accept, that which is applicable to the book and the Sunnah. So where is the blind following? Where is just the gathering of statements to simply gather them? Right, كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ This would be the example of the uh, the donkey who just gathers pages and scrolls, but you find us looking into the information that we gather and verifying it and, and validating it and seeing what's authentic and what's not. So where is just the gathering of statements that they attribute to us? This is a determination and a judgment they made that they have no foundation for. تَحَكُّمًا وَتُغْيَانًا and this is a surpassing of the bounds by them and a, tra and a transgression by them against us. So this is that paragraph. The author, he says, let's repeat it, inshallah, maybe with a little bit better streamlined translation. He says, a group of people that do not worship based on awareness of any ayat from the book of Allah, whether it be through recitation or understanding. And they do not ponder over the meanings of any ayah, therefore explaining it or interpreting it according to the according to the meaning that is following in the way of the salaf of uh, the salaf of salih, the pious predecessors, the scholars of this ummah. Instead, they don't explain it in any other way other than that which is in accordance to that which they've innovated from uh, invented opinions. Nor have their feet ever gotten dirty through seeking the sunnah. Or, or should I say, nor do they know or have awareness of any, uh, nor do they have any awareness of the legislation of Islam, nor do they have any awareness of any of the issues or the topics of the legislation of Islam, nor do they have any awareness of the legislated topics of Islam which would allow the view of these individuals to be considered 
wisdom and knowledge and evidence and clear proof. Instead, they consider the book and the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be nothing more than a compilation of statements and blind following. And they consider those who carry or who are the bearers of it, i.e. the book and the sunnah, to be ignorant fools. And this is an act of oppression and transgression from them, or this is an act of oppression and enmity from them, as well as erroneous determinations and transgression. Um, we'll take one more paragraph. The author, he says, And that's because this one of these sentences, we could have read it another way, and it's probably more accurate to read it this way. Uh, after we said, uh, and nor have their feet gotten dirty seeking the sunnah, nor do they know any of the legislated topics of Islam, he says, But instead, they consider the views of these people. I, the people that were mentioned, Al-Alaf and Nadham, they consider the views of these people to be wisdom and knowledge and evidence and clear-sightedness or clear proofs. That's a better way to translate it. He said they consider the views of these people to be wisdom and knowledge, evidence and clear sight. I, they consider the views of people like these philosophers that they attribute themselves to, they think that their statements are wisdom. And that's what they call them, felsifa, right? Philosophy, any love of uh, a felsifa is the love of wisdom, right? And the Greek word that they take it from, philosoph, uh, right? The love of wisdom. And so they, they, they think that these people's statements are the epitome of wisdom. And they think that these people's statements are true knowledge. And the statements of these individuals are the actual proofs and the clear evidence. But these people's statements are not of this. These people's statements are nothing more than conjecture. When you look at the likes of Aristotle and Plato and Socrates and those who have adopted their views and built off of their views and are, are, are from their schools of thought, you find that their statements aren't wisdom. Because wisdom is to place things where it belongs. Wisdom is to put everything in its proper place. And you find more often than not, these individuals contradicting themselves. And so if it was wisdom, it wouldn't contradict because everything would line up. And this is the case when you start studying the Quran and the Sunnah, you see how everything lines up. What you said about this topic over here, you'll see how it affects this topic over here. And everything lines up. There won't be any contradiction. If it was from someone other than Allah, they would have found an abundance of contradictions in it. So the, they consider the statements of these individuals to be wisdom and knowledge. They consider it to be knowledge. But knowledge is based in the Quran and the Sunnah. Right? And they can't inform you the way one who is well informed can. Their statements are nothing more than conjecture and guesses. And that's why you find the philosophers and the scientists constantly changing their theories and constantly updating their hypothesis. And they say it about themselves. This is speculation, but this is, ba this is speculation based off the information that we have at this time, right? But they have no knowledge. They have no certainty. It's just the most likely thing in their opinion based on what they're aware of. And as Allah says, وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you haven't been given from the knowledge except a small portion. So why would we think our statements simply, or our simple statements void of Quran and Sunnah to support would be, an, would be a statement of knowledge? So they consider the statements of these individuals to be wisdom and knowledge. And thus they use them as evidences. They use their statements as evidence. When we use the قُبْحًا لِمَنْ نَبَذَ الْكِتَابَ وَرَاءَهُ وَإِذَا اسْتَدَلَّ يَقُولُ قَالَ الْأَخْطَلُ Like Shaykh al-Islam, رحمه الله تعالى, he said in the Lamiya, قُبْحًا, meaning how disgraceful or how despicable or disgusting is the one who throws the book behind his back. And when he uses something as an evidence, he says, الْأَخْطَل said. الْأَخْطَل was a famous philosopher. He says, and they throw the book of Allah behind their back, but when they need evidence, they say, Qal al They say, Al-Akhtal said, 
Right? This is, how can this be an evidence? Al-Akhtal, he didn't create. He didn't establish. He didn't decree. He didn't preordain. He didn't send down. How could his statement be a proof about something? If his statement was right, it's only known to be right based on what it corresponds to from the Quran and the Sunnah. And how far away in, is he from being right? And how far in between are his accuracies? Right? Every once in a while, they'll get something right after a long effort and after toil and after great you know, exhaustion. They'll get something right. But the thing that they got right was already clear in the Quran and the Sunnah. They could have saved their time. And the only value that they got was something that the Quran and the Sunnah already talked about, as we've already talked about in the lessons that deal with iqtida is salat al mustaqim, the straight path necessitates following. I mean, the straight path necessitates being different than the people of the hellfire. The point is, is that they consider their statements to be hujaj, to be arguments and evidence, and they consider their statements to be barahin, clear proofs, undeniable proofs. And how could they be undeniable when they themselves argue them back and forth? And you don't have to go any further than their books to see how much argument and criticism they levy against each other. Right? We'll be aqli men. Right? And whose intellect should we Used to worship Allah. So let's repeat it one more time with the more accurate translation. He says, a group of people that do not worship based on awareness of any ayah of the book of Allah. They do not, they, a group of people who do not establish their religion based upon the awareness of any ayah from the book of Allah. Their religion isn't based on the awareness of any ayah of the book of Allah. Once again, a group of people who their religion is not based upon awareness of any ayah from the book of Allah, whether it be through recitation or through understanding. Nor do they ponder over the meanings of any ayah, explaining them and interpreting them according to the meanings that follow suit or follow the way of the Salaf as-Salih, the scholars of this ummah. Instead, they only interpret them based on the innovated opinions they have introduced and their feet have never gotten dirty seeking out the sunnah nor do they have any awareness of any topics of the legislation of islam they consider the opinions of these people like al-alaf and nazam to be wisdom and knowledge and evidence and clear proof and they consider the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger to be a mere gathering of statements and blind following. And they consider those who carry such knowledge, the bearers of such knowledge, the book and the sunnah, to be ignorant and foolish. And this is from them an oppression and an enmity or transgression and an erroneous judgment and a surpassing of bounds. We'll stop at that amount. I wanted to do another paragraph, but we're already uh, surpassed 30 minutes. We'll stop at that amount. Uh, I hope that there's benefit in this. And like I say, this is a book that requires, you know, to go over often. So, inshallah, I'll take the time to, you know, kind of understand the, 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 the benefits of his statements, even though we only read a few of them, just a paragraph. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدون لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك